show me. Hello, everybody. Marcellus Film Freak here, and we are doing some more tier ranking this time. We are talking about Samo Hung movies. Uh, even though I've seen a majority of the things on this list, I'm still not very comfortable talking about it on my own. So I've brought back help. I have brought back Sean from the Food for Thought podcast. Sean, how you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Looking forward to this. I think it will be a difficult one uh, because he's my favorite Kung Fu actor of all time. So I don't know. I wonder how many are going to be S tier. I think it is going to be a little bit rough. I also said your name like that the first time because uh, a, a couple of weeks, well, a while ago on your podcast, you said that Americans are pronouncing your name wrong. Uh, it's not just an American thing. Yeah. But yes, you will pronounce it wrong. Yeah. We tend to do that with words. It's just accent. Yeah. It's just, we say Sean and you guys pronounce it in your terrible American way. You know what? It's a beautiful, disgusting uh, accent. Uh, <laughs> let's get started. Let's go rank some Sama Hung movies. Let's do it. All right. So I have got uh, 24 movies. I did not pick every Samo Hung movie because that's a lot. Uh, yeah. if, if anybody watching this does not see maybe their favorite, I didn't pick a majority of the Three Dragons movies. I only picked uh, I only picked the Lucky Stars trilogy because those are the ones that Samo is kind of the lead in. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think it wouldn't make sense to have like Project Day or something like that in there. And I didn't pick a majority of the 90s stuff because looking at those movies, it seemed like it was just a lot of movies that he just directed or were kind of just more comedies than action movies. Yeah. That seemed to be how it went. Uh, so uh, for our, our categories here, top category is GOAT because a couple weeks ago I made a video saying that Sama Hung was the GOAT. Uh, <laughs> under that, amazing and then pretty damn good. Uh, for the C, I said give us a break. That is where, uh, you know, maybe those... Lesser movies are going to go that aren't terrible, but also the movies that we haven't seen before. Uh, I said, give us a break because I've seen a couple comments on times that we've said, we've said that and people are like, why, why are you making a list if you haven't seen all the movies? Give us a break. Oh, yeah. Okay. I definitely, there's probably at least probably three on this list I haven't seen. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I, I grabbed a couple from the 90s just in case yeah. that I definitely have not seen. Uh, and then at the very bottom here, just no thank you. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> So the first one we've got here is Iron Fisted Monk. What are your thoughts on Iron Fisted Monk? I literally watched it about an hour ago. Uh, I knew I was going to be doing this, and I just wanted to refresh my memory on this one. Um, I'm not with everyone that says this is one of Samo's greatest. I think it's, I think it's the precursor mm -hmm. to his really strong 90s, uh, sorry, 70s era. So his late 70s stuff is really good. This is 77. Right. I think it's very good. It's an excellent film. It's just not quite top caliber for me. Uh, some great fight scenes. Um, a little uh, little controversial in its subject matter. It's a bit, bit rapey. But, it, you know. dude, there was like, I get it. I understand that they're like, one of their favorite ways to say that somebody was evil yeah. was to have yeah. them sexually assault somebody but it happens like three times and i'm like i don't need to see this anymore i get it they're evil yeah it's a little extreme in this or a little heavy-handed in this one uh, with that said that finale is unbelievable it's a great finale to what i thought was just a pretty okay overall movie um i i agree with you it's not amazing it's sort of how i felt about snake in the eagle shadow where i didn't love it but i could see where the talent was going in the next few years that's that's fair. I mean, I disagree with Snake and Eagle Shadow, but that's fine. Yeah, I mean, you, you can see my point there. there. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I would probably. I think people would debate that this one should be in amazing. I think I'm content putting it in pretty damn good. Yeah, I felt pretty good about that too. Pretty damn good for Iron Fisted Monk. Uh, this next one I have not seen. I've only seen like the big major fight scene that everyone knows about. I think, uh, yeah. and that is Enter the Fat Dragon. Um. It's an excellent film. It's very, very good. Uh, some aspects of it uh, have not aged well. Um, there is an example of blackface, Lee Hoi San, uh, 
Don's black face and an Afro wig, which is mm -hmm. a bit questionable. But the fight scenes are fantastic. The comedy is not that offensive. I, I, I mean, it's actually funny. It's a, it's a funny film. Uh, I like it. It's pretty short. It's, it gets to the point. And I think Samuel Hung is the greatest Bruce Lee impersonator of all time. Um, so on that merit alone, I personally would put it in amazing. Is it the greatest Bruce Boytation film? Possibly. I'm sure it's not. I'm, I'm okay with that. I like, like I said, I haven't seen it. I do agree that he is his his Bruce Lee impersonation is amazing. Even like, like in a movie we've got coming up towards the maybe latter half of this list, Skinny Tiger, mm -hmm. Fatty Dragon. Yeah, there's just several scenes in that where he doesn't like make any noises or talk. It's just the look he has on his face that yeah. I'm like, are oh, you doing Bruce Lee? Gotcha. Yeah, he does it. He does it wonderfully. Uh, you know, he was obviously very close to Bruce at times. So yeah, he just pulled it off wonderfully. Uh, this next one we've got here is Warriors 2 with Casanova Wong. Um, what do you think about this one? Do you like this one? I So I don't think I have a lot of it totally memorized in my head. It's not the, maybe the most memorable film, but the two or three scenes I do remember are incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um... In my opinion, I, I honestly think this is the best, one of the best Kung Fu movies of all time. Um, it will probably be in my top five of all time. Uh, I think it's, personally, I even think it's better than Prodigal Son. Mm. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I, I, I can't argue that it is amazing. I remember absolutely fawning over it when I was watching it. Yeah, it's, it, the fight scenes are absolutely magical and, um, I love the fact that they all train for an individual villain, but they all end up fighting a different villain mm -hmm. uh, at the end. And Fung Hak On as the Mantis Master at the end is just, I don't know, I love this. I love that Beardy's in it as the master, the, right. the Bung Chun master. Yeah, I love everything about it. For me, this is by far one of the greatest of all time. Um, it would be up there with, actually, I don't think it's in this list. No, you've you've missed actually probably my favorite Kung Fu film. What did I miss? Uh, the Magnificent Butcher. What the fuck? Oh, I meant to grab that, and I did. <laughs> if anybody is, is needed Magnificent Butcher, just picture we already put it in GOAT. Yeah, oh yeah, okay? definitely. It's in GOAT. I don't yeah. know how I missed that. God dang it. <laughs> but yeah, Warriors 2 is up there with Magnificent Butcher. Yeah, that should be in GOAT, and I apologize for that. Um, yeah. yeah, the two scenes that uh, are the two major things that I re remember from this. Uh, Samo, at one point, uh, going against two sword guys, grabs two swords, and the quick fight he has with them had my just jaw on the floor yeah. and then the final move that casanova wong uses against the bad guy they just <laughs> they made it look like the dude got hit with a shotgun and it was beautiful yeah there's the often debated table kick uh yeah. as to whether he's on wires whether he isn't on wires whether he jumped off a with like a, like a trampoline or something mm -hmm. but uh it's an incredible kick and it should be in goat and there should be Magnificent Warrior in here. Somehow, I just didn't even think of grabbing that poster, and I feel like an idiot. Uh, the next one we've got here is Dirty Tiger, Crazy Frog. Have you seen Dirty Tiger, Crazy Frog? I certainly have, yes. What do you think? Because um, I have not. It is not great. It has maybe one of the best three-section staff fights of all time. That is what I have seen. Yes, because it's a three-section staff versus three-section staff fighting, mm -hmm. so it's amazing. Him um, and uh, Lao Kar Wing. Yep, but it is a very heavy-handed comedy. Um, it leans heavily on the on the comedic aspect, and for that reason alone, I don't really love it all that much. I think it's, I think it's good, but it's not one that I revisit often. Um, I would. See, I kind of want to put it between no thank you and pretty damn good, but and I wouldn't go as far as to say no thank you, so I'd probably say pretty damn good. Pretty damn good? All right. Like I said, I've only seen that three-section staff fight, and that three-section staff fight was absolutely incredible. Yeah, uh, I think I think we'll get a Blu-ray of that at some point. I, I wouldn't I, I honestly didn't even know it existed, and as soon as I saw that one fight scene, I needed a Blu-ray of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fun watch. It's just a little goofy. Next up, we've got one that I uh, was actually in the middle of watching when we uh, I came up here to start this, and that is the Odd Couple. Now, how having having seen some of this film, obviously, how do you feel about it so far? 
Um, I w- was enjoying the first bit, and and I've I've so far been enjoying all the training uh, because from so, our Samo Hung and Nagkar Wing are both playing two characters, right? Yes. I could obviously recognize Samo. I couldn't recognize Lao Kar Wing without the old man makeup because <laughs> yeah. I've only ever seen Lao Kar Wing in old man makeup. Makes sense. Yeah. So when when he did wasn't wearing it as as the younger person training under Samo, I just wasn't sure if it was him. I am enjoying their training sequences and the concept of old Samo teaching young Lao Kar Wing and old Lao Kar Wing teaching young Samo. I'm enjoying that a lot. Yeah. Um. I think, in my opinion, this film has the single greatest weapons fights of all time. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a film that does weapons fights better than this. Some would say legendary weapons of China. I was going to ask wrong. you that. I was going to ask you, because obviously I've, we spoke before about legendary weapons of China. We both have strong, maybe slightly negative feelings about it. Yeah. In terms yeah. of just the weapons work, odd couple or legendary weapons? Uh, legendary, uh, sorry, odd couple. Odd couple uh, just outshines legendary weapons by a lot in my opinion the only thing that legendary weapons have is it's more variety they right. use tons the of finale weapons. yeah where i think yeah. it's, it's lao car wing and lao car lung it is yeah just just yeah. swapping weapons out yeah um but in this film you know you get mostly sword versus spear stuff uh and then you get a fight at the end with a guan dao with a bod but i think i don't think anything beats these weapon fights the only problem with this film is that the comedy is very, very goofy. And mm. some people would say quite quite cringeworthy. Um, but in my opinion, I since in my opinion is the greatest weapons film of all time, I would put it in GOAT. Got it. I'm not gonna argue with that. I'm enjoying it so far and I'm gonna finish it later tonight. Yeah, uh, the next one, you have seen this. You actually watched this recently. I know you got a Blu-ray copy of it. I have never seen this. And until you brought it up on Instagram, I don't even think I'd actually heard of it. Uh, the Victim. Yes. Um, another one with Beardy in it. And uh, it, I, I knew I liked this film. I've, I've liked it since the VHS era. And um, recently I got my hands on a very, very nice copy of it. Um, beautiful widescreen. It, basically, it's the best I've ever seen it and it blew me away it was like watching it for the first time again and i would say that this uh film has some of the best fight scenes samo's ever done Mm -hmm. um towards the end he fights wilson tong and it's just amazing i i think yeah i i gave it five out of five stars i think it's better than most old school kung fu films and the good thing about it it does not lean very heavily on the comedy uh, there is one super egregious uh, comedy scene where Samo Hung dresses as Dracula, but um, that's really it. Otherwise, it is an absolute fight fest from start to finish, and the fights are original and just breathtaking. I I put it up there. I put it in goat. Got it. Good to hear. I'll have to watch that at some point. Yeah, please do. And uh, yeah, if you can get your hands on that amazing copy that's out there, then please do. It's it's awesome. Next one we've got here, I'm sure everybody has seen, and that is Encounters of the Spooky Kind or Spooky Encounters. What are your thoughts on 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 this one? Um, <laughs> I hate to sound like a broken record, but I think Encounters of the Spooky Kind is one of my favorite Hong Kong films of all time. Not just Kung Fu, but Hong Kong films of all time. Mm. Um, I love this film. My wife loves this film. Um, I just it it just hits every single point that i wanted to hit it's got solid comedy it's got very good horror and the the fight scenes are in it are just unbelievable the the final what is it 15 minutes mm-hmm. where the uh, samo doing the monkey fist is just unbelievably good and when he fights the zombie as well or the yeah or, i i really enjoyed the uh, what is it like a chang shi or something like that yeah chang shi yeah uh, mm-hmm. i i enjoyed that a lot i i I think I'd seen that fight on just on YouTube, little snippets of it at first. And I was like, I don't know if I like this very much, but then just it, within the context of the movie, I, yeah. I loved him like throwing the eggs in the casket and then the sort of sorcerer who that's affecting, like getting hit. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, this is a, it's just a, it's a real magical film. It just balances all its, all its components very, very well. 
and it's just proof that uh, Samo can do very good horror when he wants to. Mm. Um, you know, this would be up there with Mr. Vampire for me as like kind of the best kung fu or not kung fu kind of horror comedy, I suppose. Um, yeah, like I said, one of my favorites of all time. I'll let you overrule that if you like, if you want to put it lower. But for me, it would be a goat. Yeah, I think it's got to go and go because when when you say horror kung fu, my brain goes to Mr. Vampire and Spooky Encounters. Exactly. I can't, exactly. I, you know, uh, my brain has never gone to this was going to goat. My brain has never gone to our next movie, which I've never seen or heard of until looking at making a list. And that is The Dead and the Deadly. Have you seen this? I have seen it. I have not seen it since the VHS era. So with this one, I think I, as far as I can recall, this one is not heavy on the fight scenes. Really? I believe it's definitely more horror and definitely more comedy. Um, but if I was going to put it anywhere, I would say give us a break because I, I don't remember a damn thing about it. That's fine with me. Never heard it. Never heard of it. Never seen it. Um, probably never will. Uh, the next one I've got here is the first of the Lucky Stars trilogy, and that is Winners and Sinners. Uh, having just watched this whole trilogy recently it may be the bottom of the trilogy for me <laughs> i think it's the top of the trilogy for really me. it's very interesting i love when it's in sinners and i don't think it's got the best fight scenes and mm. i don't necessarily think it's got the best plot uh but i very i, I love it for some reason i, I don't understand why because years ago i would prefer any of the others to this um so I think I'm with you. I think most people would agree it's the lowest of the of the trilogy or the bottom of the trilogy. Um, but how good is it in your eyes? Is it bad or is it still good? It's a fun watch. I I enjoy watching all of the characters come together. Like yeah. they all kind of worked and and they all they all fell into place perfectly. Mm -hmm. They all fit where they needed to fit in. Uh, I I adore the quick like fast food restaurant fight scene it's not very long it's like 45 seconds long but it's incredible yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah i would i'm fine with this going in if you just see it as pretty damn good i'm okay with it being pretty damn good i'm cool um, with it going in amazing just because okay. something's the lowest of the trilogy it's a good trilogy but it's gonna go, it's go. the lowest of the trilogy i am fine with that because i don't think i'd put it in goat despite loving it i i wouldn't put it there this next one for me is the best of the trilogy, and that is the second. That is my lucky stars. Uh, so I'm going to have to ask a question on this one, mm. and that is, what happens to the end of this one? I get Twinkle and my lucky <clears throat> confused. The end of this one has the bodybuilder chick. Okay. okay. And has um, the stunt where Yuan Wa got knocked himself out doing that backflip or whatever through the, through the glass and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I know yeah. that the the actor playing the character wasn't Yuan Hua, but the person who did the stunt was Yuan Hua. Well, funny enough, like uh, I think the actor was Lao Ka Wing, right? That sounds right. Yeah, yes, I yes, think, it was. I think it is. Um, yeah, that's a, a brutal stunt. That's interesting. I really, really, really like this film, um, and I love the finale. I do actually prefer. I like the Richard Norton fight in the next one mm. as the finale, and I like the tennis racket scenes. Um, but this is, I mean, it's. It's a certified, just legendary film, right? Most people would, I, I imagine, agree when you're talking about Samo and Jackie that this would be up there, I mm. imagine. Um, so you're saying maybe throw this one in Goat or Amazing? I, I think so. No, I think I think it has to be. It's, it's certainly one of Samo's best modern films. My Lucky Star is going in Goat. Can it do the same for Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Stars? Uh, I... I think I don't think this is an amazing one. I think it is saved by incredible action. I think the the fight yeah. scene with uh, Andy Lau, Yuen Wa, and uh, Jackie Chan in the warehouse. Yeah, and then the finale with um, uh, Yasuaki Karada and Richard Norton. I think they saved the movie from being a little bit less. Yeah, I I definitely think those are the standout scenes. Which one is it in the series where, and I have to be politically correct here, uh, Samo fights the gentlemen dressed as ladies? I'm struggling to remember that in any of them. Oh no, you don't remember that scene? There's, I don't think um, so. He fights. He fights a bunch of women. Um, they're, they're they're lady actors, but they turn out to be men. I think. 
I feel like that would maybe be the first one. It could, I, could I'm not be, sure. I, I just love that fight scene. I think it's fantastic. It's really, really good. But uh, I'm content with putting this one with Winners and Sinners and putting it in Amazing. This one does also have, uh, is it the on-screen action uh, introduction of um, Michelle Yeoh? <laughs> Got the judo scene in it. She's the she's like the judo teacher, and and Samuel Hung throws her around. That's a great moment. That's a great. That's a very good scene. Yeah. I'm cool with that going and amazing. Uh, and okay. this is we're going to continue on with Samuel Hung just being on a great string here through the late '80s with yeah. uh, Shanghai Express or Millionaires Express. Um, I mean, I, this is arguably Samuel Hung's greatest. Uh, well, maybe not greatest, but almost greatest feat as a director. Um, he made, you know, he chose to do a, essentially a Western and he nails it perfectly. And the cast is absolutely stellar. Mm -hmm. And what I like about this film is it's not fight filled. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have as many fights as you might expect, but it is a damn good film by itself. Um, this film, you could probably take all the action out and it would still be like a solid right. adventure comedy. Um, I love it, but you throw the action in there and I, I, that Yoon Biao versus Dick Wei fight, just mm -hmm. stunning. This, Absolutely. this is maybe, and, and he does it again with Eastern Condors, this is one of the most stacked. This is, this is Triple Threat 30 years before Triple Threat with... <laughs> Samo, Yuan Biao, Yasuaki Karada, Dick Wei, Richard Norton, uh, um, Cynthia, Cynthia Rothrock, Rothrock uh, what's her name, uh, the, the Japanese woman? Yeah, uh, Yukari Oshima. Yes. Uh, yeah. And there's probably some more in there that I'm leaving out. That is, yeah, that's an incredible. Ri Richard Un makes a cameo. I think a whole bunch of people mm. are cameo. Yeah, it's, it's a magical film and just everything comes together perfectly. And you have so many highlight moments. Mm. Yuan Biao's in same jump off the building that's on fire yeah and uh Cynthia Rothrock just kicking the just stuffing out of Samuel Hung just yeah, I think she, uh, according to one of them temporarily deafened one of his ears yeah brutal uh yeah for me definitely goat yeah it's it's, it's oh where to go I don't even know where to go there it is uh yeah no it's it's a credit it's incredible i need to rewatch it soon uh i had the fortune star blu-ray i recently replaced it with uh i think was it the eureka or 88 films just released eureka it. yeah yeah i just replaced it with that one i've been doing that with a lot of my fortune star blu-rays just because people on the on the internet have been telling me that eureka and 88 films i haven't watched the fortune star one since i bought them several years ago and people yeah. have been saying that the actual overall quality of them has improved so i've been getting the new copies just for that yeah, I've heard that some of the Fortune Star ones are like upscaled and they're not, you know, proper 2K or 4K releases. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think I think Eureka does such wonderful work. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. What is that running out of time? I'm hurrying. Go away. Well, you used to be able to ask for it. Uh, Eastern Condors is what we've got next here. Uh, I mean, you watched this more recently than I have for the podcast. So what do you think? Uh, Samo's best film as a director. I think uh, easily uh, he he tackles the genre of war and does it amazingly. Fantastic action! The last twenty minutes is one of his best. Uh, Samo versus Yun Wa, uh, Yun Biao versus uh, Billy Chow. Yeah, uh, just and everyone's in this film. It, Samo's wife's in it. Mm. Uh, Yu Wu Ping's in it. Corey Yoon's in it. It's just bonkers how many Lam people Ching are in Ying. this film. Lam Ching Ying, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Lam Ching Ying, I remember watching, and I had to just rewind like three times to watch Lam Ching Ying's death. I just thought it was cool. Like the way he just like he just grabs the pistol and then boom, it just fires on. I just thought it was yeah. dope. Yeah, uh, like Joyce Godin, like Samo Hung, he puts his wife in the film and then he's just like, oh, I'm going to have them cut your hand off. I think mm -hmm. that's just incredible. Uh, Ethan Condors, I think it's arguably, possibly... If you look took all if you looked at all the elements of that film and saw it as a complete movie rather than like a martial arts movie, I think Eastern Condors is his best film. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, cool not my that. not my favorite, but certainly best. So we're thinking goat, of course, for that. Yes. Next up, I've never seen this. I'm pretty sure you have Petty Cab Driver. Yep, Petty Cab Driver, uh, a very good film, uh, a little light on the action, I will admit. Um it's a fine, slight 
comedy drama film. Um, obviously, it features one of the most legendary fights of all time, which is Lao Kar Lung versus Sammo Hung, mm-hmm. um, which is fantastic. And then you've got some great action towards the end. But I would not put it as a GOAT film. Some people would, I would not. Um, I think it's wonderful, and I, I think everyone should see it, but I only think it's amazing. I, I don't think it's GOAT. I'm cool with that. I feel like if it were GOAT status, I would have had an easier access to buying a copy of it already. Yeah, the only copy that's out there right now is the, um, the I can't remember who put it out, maybe Warner Archive put it out on DVD only, mm. and it's only got um, uh, subtitles for the hearing impaired on it. It's got no just standard subtitles uh so that's the only version that's available right now it's the same thing they did with uh drunken mask 2 oh but they put that on blu-ray afterwards yeah uh so i have not seen the sequel this is spooky encounters part two have you seen the sequel this film is my moby dick um i have not seen this film and i have wanted to see it for many many years and i've only ever been able to see it in really shoddy versions and i've always postponed it because i really want to see the film because i love the mm-hmm. first one so much uh i've seen the end the, some of the fight action at the end and it's wonderful but it would have to be give us a break because as much as i want to say it's going to be fantastic i believe it's a lot more comedic than uh, action filled right gotcha uh next one i've only seen the fight between yuan biao and samo hung and that is shanghai shanghai um I should watch it. I think it's on Haya at the moment. Oh. Uh, yeah, I believe it's on there. I believe it's a good copy as well. It might be remastered, but I have they not watch seen it soon then. Yeah, I have not seen Shanghai, Shanghai, so I could not speak on it. Another one for Give Us a Break. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, I have seen this. Got the, that the, was this one, was this one 88 or Eureka? Skinny this Tiger Fighting Dragon? was uh, Eureka. Got it. Uh, that is what I, yeah, I picked the, this copy of this one, Skinny Tiger Fatty Dragon. Um, I didn't love it. However, I did love a majority of the action. Yeah, I'm with you. I think a lot of people say this film is fantastic when in all honesty, it is not fantastic. It is a fine film and mm-hmm. it's saved by very, very good action. Um, uh, at the end, I mean, the nunch- nunchucks and Mark Houghton and Dark Wing, great mm-hmm. stuff, but it's not great it's, mm. the comedy is kind of a bit grating right. and dare i say it's a little boring mm-hmm. yeah i wasn't i wasn't totally enthralled throughout it yeah so i like it it's it's good it's a film that sure i'll watch again in the future just not regularly i am content doing pretty damn good i wouldn't say it's terrible yeah i i agree uh, I have also never seen, uh, what is that, uh, uh, was it Panty, Pantyhose Hero or something? Pantyhose like Hero? Yeah. Um, yeah, Pantyhose Hero is an interesting one. It's one of Samuel's films that will never get a Blu-ray release. Um, it's quite a, uh, it hasn't aged well. It's got mm. what you'd call homophobia these days. Back right. then, it wasn't considered homophobia. But Back then, it was it, comedy. Exactly. And it is, yeah, it would not be taken uh, lightly these days. But the film is good. It's a good film and it has absolutely stunning action. Um, I think this is the one uh, with the car stunt in it where Sam gets hit by a car. Um, I think there were like two stuntmen that did it, but the, the hit is one of the most brutal I've ever seen. It's crazy. Um, I would I would put it pretty damn good. Uh, I, I don't think it's up there as one of his best, uh, and it's, yeah, it hasn't aged well, so pretty damn good. Yeah, it's just one that I've never been able to come across. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen this. This looks like it's probably more of a comedy than action. It looks like we got three Samo Hungs here, and that is The Gambling Ghost. Yes, I have it on DVD. Um, I have not watched it in a long time. All I remember is the final fight, and I like that, but... I would say give us a break on this one because it's not fresh in my mind. Gotcha. And I can't, I keep forgetting what even this movie is called. Uh, Slicker versus Killer. I've never seen this. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, that, that one I've, I've never seen. Give us a break. Uh, next one is, again, this is, this is where I drew the line in the 90s where I was like, all right, I'm done picking from these because I don't even know what most of this is. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is My Flying Wife. I've never even heard of this. Song. Right? No. Again, I was going through the 90s and I was like, I've never heard of most of this stuff. 
I got to that one and I was like, I'm done picking from the nineties. That's enough. Yeah. I, I, that one, I think, yeah, definitely one I'm, I'm not all that familiar with. So this one is obviously an American TV show, but I couldn't help but include it here. And that is martial law. What are your thoughts on martial law? Uh, you are slightly on your own with this one. Uh, martial law. I bought earlier this year on DVD and I have not yet put it in my DVD play. Uh, you lost it. You lost a copy of martial law. I got it. It's in here. Oh, it's down in the DVDs. Yeah, I uh, got it. It was in the I've, DVD section. I've got it. It's probably, actually, it's probably right behind. Yeah, it's, it's literally right on this stack here. It's literally on that stack. And I just, I've never seen it. I've never put it in because I know I just need time to watch it because when yeah. I watch a show, I like to invest in it. So the action that I've seen looks awesome. I don't know about the rest of it. I'm enjoying it a lot. I have not finished it despite having had this for almost two years. Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely on like disc two or three. Um, nice. It's it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's 90s nostalgia like crazy. The like the intro sequence is just some of the most 90s stuff you've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, it just you feel its age, but I mean, it, I'm enjoying it a lot. Yeah, I, I want to get around to it. I've actually talked about doing it for the podcast or doing like a few episodes of it for the podcast, but maybe I'll get to that at some point. But yeah, this is all on you. You, it's way more fresh for you. Uh, I mean, it's look. I'm gonna go. It's not an amazing tv show it, it only lasted two seasons you could tell after you could tell when rush hour came out because yeah. it's its own thing and then rush hour came out and all of a sudden they bring in arsenio hall and <laughs> yeah uh but i mean it's a lot of fun i'm gonna go pretty damn good on it i'm enjoying yeah. it so far there's there's so many fun like before they were really famous people in it like there's yeah. an episode where it's, uh it's like pre it's it gives you of course they're both in uh here comes the boom um but kevin james and um boss rootin Oh, played, wow. They both play the bad guys in one episode, and I enjoyed that episode a lot. Um, let's go Triad Wars. Is this also known as Invisible... Isn't this, is this the one with Wu Jing? So this is not an Invisible Target. This is a totally different movie. People thought this was a sequel to um, SPL. Triad Wars? I, who is that on the front? That's Wu Jing. Have you, seen, have, you, have you seen it? I am truly baffled by this film. Well, let me tell you. Watch the last fight scene on YouTube, and then don't watch the rest of the movie. Oh, wait. No, no, no. It is known as something else. It's the one with Wu-Jin with blue hair, and he has yeah. a staff fight at the end. It's known as, like, Invisible Something. Or, oh, my God, I can't remember the other name. It does have an alternative name, though. I think the meeting's about to end here, but I'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, anyway, if, if you don't remember it, then that probably says something about it. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it, the final fight scene is amazing. The rest of the movie is pretty mediocre. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know when this is probably about to end. It's probably got seconds left on it. Uh, we'll see what happens. The Bodyguard. Do you know about The Bodyguard? Uh, I've seen it, and I didn't love it. All right, so we left off with uh, the bodyguard. Uh, we got cut off for people watching uh, Zoom meeting. We things are weird. Happens. Uh, so the bodyguard. Uh, what were you saying? What were your thoughts on the? What was this like 2014? The bodyguard. I did just remember that Triad Wars was is also known as Fatal Move. That's, That's what it was. Yes, Fatal yeah. Move. Yeah, and it is a garbage film. Um, That's not very good. Bodyguard. I have a, 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 a kind of maybe a, a, an interesting opinion that I will never watch this film again, mm. uh, simply because for action fans or Kung Fu fans, it's got, I think maybe two fights in right. and they are maybe like 20 seconds long each. They're very, very short for a dramatic film. It's all good and well, and it's a fine drama film, but it's just, it just does nothing for me. I just mm. find it very boring and, I understand that he was trying to do something different and he kind of achieves that. But for my tastes and my wants, mm -hmm. I like a good drama film, but if I'm going to watch drama, I wouldn't watch The Bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wouldn't either. Uh, if I want um, some hung action, I'm not really going to The Bodyguard. If I want exactly. a good, if I want a good Kung Fu drama, I'm not going with The Bodyguard. Uh, yeah. I think the only real, well, there's a lot of good ones, but my brain just always goes back to Shaolin because it's a freaking masterpiece. Shaolin's a solid film, absolutely. 
Um, I also don't remember liking the action that much, and it wasn't even Samo Hung. It was like, it wasn't from what I remember because I only watched this once. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even like shaky cam. It like the camera like rumbled when he hit somebody. Yeah, it's it's not captured very well. Um, I actually watched a fight from this film last week, and I I didn't love it all that much. It's mm. definitely maybe it was Samo Hung trying to kind of counter the fact that he's a bit older now, mm. and he was trying to do something a little more dynamic with the camera. But I agree, it doesn't look great. It's cool, you know, there's bone snapping and stuff like that, but it's it's just seen it all before. And for a modern for Samo, you just want more from him. Uh, and so, uh, before I say this last thing, uh, give us a break or no thank you. I, I would say no thank you. Yeah, I probably would too. I'm even slightly questioning um, uh, Triad Wars because I think I'm going to go Triad Wars, no thank you. I'm glad because I would also agree with you. Since I remembered it was Fatal mm -hmm. Move, I was just like, oh yeah, that film is trash apart from that amazing fight scene. Because the, the final fight I truly believe is is amazing. I talked about it in a video recently where my whole point of it was Samo Hung has spent this latter half of his career or latter quarter like putting over the younger guys. Yeah. And I ad I truly adore the final fight. But I have not watched the movie since the first time I watched it because I can just find the final fight on YouTube. Yeah, I feel there was a bit of a stumbling block for Wu Jing as well. Wu Jing like was hot coming mm. coming out the gate. But then he had a few of those films that just didn't quite hit. And uh, yeah, that was one of them. Yep, so let's know that and no thank you. Uh, what I was going to say about Bodyguard was um, this was one of two films that did this that pissed me off. And it's when movies throw somebody on the cover or even feature them heavily in the trailer. Mm -hmm. And then they're just not actually in it a lot. This movie did it with Yuan Biao. He is all over the, <laughs> the, the, the cover, the poster, everything. And then he's in what, like 15 seconds of the movie? Yeah, it's it's sad when they do that, but I, I guess yeah, that's just something they do. The number of films that have put like like I think it's Twins Effect too. I think there's a copy out there with like mm -hmm. Jackie Chan and Donnie Yen. And yes. there it is just cameo. That uh yeah, yeah, that it's also called like Four Blades or something. Um yes. Yes. the other movie that did it that pissed me off was Paradox with Tony Ja. Yes. Movie's fine. It just lied to me. I thought, but I, I almost bought that film the other day. I don't own it, but I almost bought it because I was just like, it's not a terrible film. It's pretty good. It's not too bad. It just shouldn't have been dishonest with me. Uh, yeah. So let's let's count these up from the bottom uh, for no thank you movies that we really don't recommend watching or maybe just watch them once and never touch them again. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got Triad Wars and um, my, The Bodyguard or My Beloved Bodyguard. Yep. Give us a break, which is movies that we either haven't seen, uh, are just not very good, or yeah, we just haven't seen. Uh, I don't even remember what most of these are called. Uh, the Dead and the Deadly, Spooky Encounters 2, Shanghai, Shanghai, which apparently is on high, yeah, which means I'm going to yep. watch it soon. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gambling Ghost, uh, the Victim or the, the Victim versus something. Uh, I'm not even going to remember what that was called. Uh, yeah, My know. Flying Wife, and then Pretty Damn Good. We've got the Iron Fisted Monk. Uh, cr cr was it Crazy Tiger? Dirty Tiger, Dirty Tiger, Crazy Frog. Yeah. Uh, Skinny Tiger, Fatty Dragon, uh, Pantyhose Hero, and the TV show, Martial Law, which is a lot of fun. Uh, amazing, incredible movies. They're just not goaded. Uh, Enter the Fat Dragon, Winners and Sinners, Twinkle Twinkle Lucky Star, and Pedicab Driver. Any of these so far, by the way, do you think should be moved? No, I, I don't. I don't think so. I, I'm actually quite happy. I wish. I wish there were less films in Give Us a Break. I really wish I would have seen more. But I'm actually really happy with how how this looks. I mean, really, we've only got like three random '90s comedies we've never heard of, and then two movies that neither of just have that just neither of us have been able to come across. Yeah, and I know I've seen Dead and the Deadly, and uh, yeah, I. I think I've seen The Gambling Ghost, and I just don't remember them. I get confused between The Gambling Ghost and Ghost Hunting, which mm -hmm. is another Samo Hung film. Um, but yeah, and yeah, I don't know. But I'll, I'll seek them out. I'll try and get my hands on them. And lastly, in GOAT status, the greatest of all time Samo Hung films, Warriors 2 with Casanova Wong, The Odd Couple, The Victim, 
uh, Spooky Encounters, My Lucky Stars, uh, Millionaire's Express, I prefer that title, uh, mm -hmm. and Eastern Condors. Feeling good about those? I'm very happy about the GOAT films. Uh, I do have to, I am going to go back and reassess my opinions on the Lucky Stars trilogy. I think, uh, I think I may, I may have different opinions from everyone else putting winners and sinners at the top. I think I'm going to have to change that. So I'm going to go ahead and rewatch those, but I mean, you can't go wrong with that, with that category. The, the GOATs are, yeah, perfect. All right. I'm cool with it too. Uh, let's get out of this screen share and bring this thing to a close. Awesome. Stop share. All right. So that was our tier list for the films of Samo Hung. Again, apparently my mistake, I somehow forgot to include uh, uh, Magnificent Butcher. It's my fault. Imagine we put it in goat because it goes in goat. Uh, but Sean, <laughs> do you want to tell people where they can find you and what they should listen to? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I have a podcast that's available on all podcast platforms. It's known as Foo for Thought. Um, we release episodes once every two weeks. Basically, it's uh, it's a podcast where I try and get my best friend and my wife into Kung Fu films. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but we have a nice, funny discussion about it. Um, and on Instagram, I am Foo underscore four underscore thought. If you like, you know, Kung Fu clips, fight scenes, uh, movie stills, stuff like that. That's basically what I post. And Twitter, I'm fairly new to Twitter. I'm probably about six months deep into Twitter. So I am Foo for thought pod on Twitter. So give me a follow on there and uh, you'll see more of my personality on there, but I still do talk about movies an awful lot. And if you enjoy Food for Thought a lot, uh, you know, maybe feeling gracious, you got a couple bucks that you can uh, throw around. Uh, he's also on <laughs> Patreon with Food for Thought. There you're gonna get uh, some videos of him talking about his movie collection, some just like some new buys, and then just, you know, him goofing around with uh, with, with his wife or with some dude in a mask. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> that's true, yes. Very, very strange stuff on there. But uh, yeah, if you have a few dollars to spare, that's patreon.com slash Food for Thought. And it all goes towards probably just new stuff for the podcast, really. Exactly. Uh, That's yeah. exactly what it does. Yeah. I've been working with the same equipment since like, at least since I started on YouTube seven years ago, I, I the exact same equipment. Yeah. I think it's funny when you, when you start something like this, uh, I start stuff with the worst microphone in the world. Uh, the first episode of food for thought sounds like we're just talking into a microwave. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And then we got, semi-decent equipment and now we're working with the good stuff working with the good stuff and it's pretty much my favorite kung fu based <laughs> podcast so you should go listen to it uh you can it, you're welcome you can find me on instagram at martial arts film freak a bunch of underscores in there between all those tristan underscore glover on the twitter martial arts film freak facebook page i've been getting a lot better about tiktok mostly just because i found a fun little formula where i just i find usually really bad lists on like collider.com or screen rant and i just complain about them because who the fuck puts the tuxedo as some of the best jackie chan fight scenes yeah that's uh that's crazy it's got to be clickbait crazy. and if that's the case i clicked i think i could probably name 50 jackie chan fight scenes that are better than those in the tuxedo i could name 50 jackie chan fight scenes from american movies that are better than i can name every fight scene from the jackie chan adventures that's better than the tuxedo for god dang sakes it could you be the, the dragon blade even has a better fight I scene than those in the tuxedo freaking love dragon blade oh, you do? I, look i picked it up i watched it at a time where i was i, I didn't expect anything i picked yeah. it up thinking you know what i see john cusack i see adrian Bodie. this is going to be interesting at the very least and because my expectations were so low, I really enjoyed it. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but yes, do all those things. Follow him on all those social medias. Uh, subscribe on my stool just squeaked. Uh, subscribe, all those things. Patreon, like, share. Comment down below what your favorite Sama Hung movies are and which ones we're stupid for not having seen. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching. Sean, thank you very much. And have thank a you. good day.